Okay, I just spent the last few days working with probably the coolest lens of all time. I'm talking, of course, about the Canon RF 85 1.2. Yes, you heard me right, 1.2. And I gotta be honest, it wasn't exactly the experience I thought it was going to be, but I'm gonna tell you all about it, so without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so full disclosure, I haven't had a whole lot of interest in shooting with a 1.2 lens. It just doesn't seem to be something that I would use very often. Uh, in the studio, I'm generally shooting at 5, 6, or 8, so I'm not generally going for that super shallow depth of field. So I don't know that there was a whole lot of occasions that I thought, oh, I wish I could drop down to 1.2. It just didn't really come up much in my shooting lifestyle. Of course, that's the funny thing. When you have a lens like that, you immediately start thinking, well, what could I do to shoot at 1.2? So as soon as I got the lens, I immediately go out back and just set someone down in front of a brick wall. Not much of a scene at all, but uh, I go ahead and get in close, crop it in, drop down to that 1.2. Uh, lens immediately focuses on the eyes and you get this really nice image and it just completely obliterates the background, but it gives it this wonderful creamy look. And it's funny because it's just someone sitting in front of a brick wall, but all of a sudden you've got all this wonderful depth, the eyes really jump out, and I was shocked how accurate the focusing was. Now one of the downsides of a 1.2 lens is that your focus better be perfect because if it's a little bit off, if it's on the tip of the nose or back here somewhere, those eyes are going to be soft and it's not going to be a usable image. So that was one of the things that was kind of worrying me a little bit, but I used it for several sessions and it almost never missed on the eyes. It always went right to the eyes, locked in, and you just get these beautiful images with the eyes just super tack sharp and everything in the back disappears. I tried it once just kind of doing a traditional type business headshot type image where I used it as a more traditional lens and that worked just fine. You can certainly dial it back to a, you know, a F8, 5.6, something like that. But then I tried to get in really close and really drop down that aperture and get that super shallow depth of field. And it created a really nice looking image. Um, not quite the same type look, but it was really nice to have the ability to jump back and forth between those two, kind of depending on what kind of a look you wanted, it really will do either one. Now, one thing that all of the RF lenses have is this little control ring that you can assign to whatever you want. You can set it to change the ISO, the aperture, just kind of depends on um, what you change the most during sessions. I don't typically use a lot of changes during my sessions. I kind of get dialed in and then I'm making small tweaks as I go. However, since this lens um, since the f-stop was kind of a big selling feature of this lens, I went ahead and had mine assigned to uh, change the aperture for a while. And it was hard to kind of get used to using it because I'm not used to it, but uh, it was nice to be able to, just without even going back behind the camera, just to quickly change that aperture. And especially for just going with available light and shooting something in aperture priority, it really is handy. Now, in a studio session, like I do most of mine, um, with the strobes and things, even at 100 ISO, it's gonna be hard to shoot much with that 1.2 because the strobes just put off so much. So you'd have to use some sort of a neutral density filter or something to uh, get that light level down where you could use your strobes with it. But honestly, what I did a lot of times was I just shot at a shallower, a 2.8, four aperture, and then I would just turn off the strobes and have the modeling lights and try and just take advantage of that really shallow depth of field again and just open that lens up and just shoot from the modeling light. And I got some really nice images that way as well. It really does give you a lot of options. So there's so many pros in the pro column for this lens. However, when you go over to the con column, there's a few things over there as well that we just need to mention. The first one is the weight. This thing is heavy. Um, it, it is just a beast of a lens. It feels like you're getting every dollar's worth of it. Uh, it's solid, it's heavy, and it's big. Uh, if you were going to shoot a wedding with this and have to carry it around all day uh, on a strap, I feel like that would get really heavy really fast. So um, that's kind of a negative point of this. Now, you're not going to find this kind of a lens that's super light. That's going to always be the trade-off. 
So it's not a knock on this particular lens. It's just having this big a piece of glass is going to be heavy and it's going to weigh you down. Uh, not a problem at all, obviously, if you're on a tripod, but if you have to lug this thing around, the weight sure could become an issue at some point. The other big negative is the price. Uh, this lens will set you back about 2,500 bucks right now. And uh, that's a lot of money to spend on a lens. And it kind of depends on a couple of factors. One, do you have an extra 2,500 laying around? Uh, if so, it is every bit worth the money. It's worth every penny of the $2,500. However, uh, if that's not something you've got a lot of, then it might be a little bit of a luxury type lens. While you can't duplicate that 1.2 look with anything else, you could certainly pick up a, a 1.8 or even a 2.8 lens and get a lot of a very similar type of look, not as nice, but close uh, for a fraction of the price. And so it certainly would be something that you've got to decide whether that is something worth it to you to have or not. So what's the final verdict? I would say if you've got the money, it is an absolute must-have lens. It is fantastic. If you don't have 2500 laying around, uh, there are certainly plenty of alternatives that will be a lot less money that will get you part of the way there, um, but probably not all of the way. So let me know what you think in the comments. With all those features, is it worth $2,500 or is that just too much for a lens? Love to hear your thoughts. But that's all we've got for this video. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.